Let's say you have an axe, you also have a sword. Now both of these weapons you deal damage by you swinging them. They also have a certain damage amount, but instead of you defining axe swing versus sword swing or something like axe damage versus sword damage, you might have a generalized object called weapon. Now weapon has characteristics of swinging and damage, and you can say that the both of these are weapons. This is essentially how our brain works. You might have a generalized concept of holding something and swinging it. An axe is a weapon. A sword is also a weapon. So in our code, I might say class weapon. We also have class axe and sword. Don't get caught up too much with the syntax. I'm going to say an axe is a weapon. A sword is a weapon. Weapon is the parent, and axe and sword are children. You should already know private versus public. If not, check out the playlist. I have the links below. This time, I'm going to have something called protected. Protected is very similar to private. The only difference is that the children have access to the protected variables. For example, I might have damage for the weapon as well as the name, weapon name. By default, I'm going to say damage is one. And just like private, from the outside, you cannot access this. Only axe and sword can because they're children. Let's try debugging this. I'm going to have an axe and sword. Set up a breakpoint, F9, run the debugger. Let's look at memory. I'm going to look at the address of the sword. Because a sword is a weapon, it has all the characteristics of a weapon. You can see that it has the name, weapon name by default, 20 bytes, and it also has the damage. Same thing with the axe. It's got a name and damage amount. If you're wondering why the address for the axe and the sword are right next to each other, check out video number 18. For this video, I'm going to move on. And as a public function, the weapon is going to have something called swing. And as the axe is a weapon, you can swing the axe. Same thing with the sword, you can swing it. Now, instead of just a function, let me introduce something called pure virtual function. Virtual void swing equals zero. This is something you're going to see frequently regarding inheritance. This means that we don't have a definition for the weapon swing, but on an abstract level, all weapons have some sort of a swinging function. If we go down to the main, we now have an error message. This is because the function swing is undefined. To fix this, I'm going to clearly define what a swing is. Void swing. I'm going to say stdc out swinging. I'm going to get the weapon name. I'm going to swing it for x amount of damage. Now we see that the error message is gone for the sword. I'm going to define the axe swing as well. I forgot to say they're public. Now the main function is fine. If I run this, F5, here's our result. Let's also create a general function for setting up a name. I'm going to say set name. Let's use a string. Usually I'm not a huge fan of using strings, but for simplicity, for this video, I'm just going to use the string. Name is whatever we designate. So for our main, I'm going to say axe set name. I'll call it a big axe. For the sword, I'm going to say a big sword. Now if I run this, F5, okay, we're swinging the axe for one damage. We're swinging the sword for one damage. And just to avoid confusion, for the swing, I'm going to use this syntax, override, 
override. This is a failsafe. It literally means that we're overriding this function. If I were to do this to some random function that is exclusive to the x, some function, if I try to use it here, I'm going to get an error message because this function is not overriding anything. This function is. Once I see the word override, I know that there's some sort of a parent object, and that parent object has a function called swing. Let's also try setting the damage. Set damage. Get an integer called damage. And let me change this to rename it to m damage as in a member variable. Same thing with the name, member name, and member damage equals whatever damage that we input. So for the main, I'm going to say x damage is, I'll say 2, sword damage. I'll say 2, actually I'll set the x damage to 3, just because I like axes and f5. Okay, now we have two different weapons, but they both inherit from the same weapon class. One thing that's interesting about inheritance is that let's say I have another class called weapon enhancer. This is going to have a function called enhance. We're going to take in the address of a weapon, and I'm going to get the damage, the current damage of the weapon, return damage. So for the enhance, I'm going to get the weapon damage and set new damage plus five, something like that. Now I can go down to main and I'm going to say weapon enhancer. The enhancer is going to take in the axe, and I'm going to swing the axe one more time, F5. Okay, after enhancing, we now have 8 damage for the axe. And I can do the same thing, enhance the sword, F5. I forgot to swing the sword after enhancing. Sword swing F5 again. Okay, now we have new damage for the axe and the sword, plus 5. So if we look at the weapon enhancer, it doesn't care whether it's a sword or an axe. It just cares that it's a weapon, and once you get the weapon, you get the damage, and plus 5, and we set up the new damage. And we already know that an axe is a weapon, a sword is a weapon, so we can put either of them into the enhance function. So this is a very simple example of inheritance. In real life, you're going to see a lot more examples that are way more complicated, and we'll get to that later in the series, one by one. For this video, let's just understand the very basic idea of inheritance. For your homework, try creating your own classes, could be weapons, items, different character classes. Be creative, try to express them in plain text, and later we're going to start having graphics. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.